All right, guys, welcome to your 56 biology lesson. And in this tutorial, I want to finish meiosis one by talking about the last phase, which is telophase one. And also, what we're going to be doing is hopping into meiosis two, which is kind of the second phase of meiosis. So basically, after meiosis one, we end up with two haploid daughter cells. So let me go ahead and draw those right now. Here's one, here's another one. And of course, I'll go ahead and draw everything and then explain it. Let me draw my DNA all scattered in here. DNA, DNA, and some more right over there. All right, so basically what's going on is cytokinesis is gonna complete and that's what gives us our two daughter cells. So these are the two daughter cells. And remember, they are haploid, H-A-P-L-O-I-D. So what haploid means is they have one set of chromosomes. So remember I said that we started with the diploid cell, which had 46 chromosomes, or two sets of chromosomes, one from your mom, one from your dad. Well, at the end of meiosis one, or telophase one, what happens is we have two daughter cells, each of which have 23 chromosomes, or one set. Another thing that happens that's you know noteworthy is that our nuclear membrane is going to reform again and the spindles as you can see there are no spindles anymore they're going to break down so we're pretty much you know restarting going back to our starting point without the spindles and with our nuclear membrane again now the last thing as you can see is the chromosomes are going to uncoil and they're going to spread around the nucleus basically like they were during interphase or during the beginning of meiosis. So that is basically what telophase 1 is and remember after this we hop over to meiosis 2. Now during meiosis 2 Again, this process is going to look very similar to meiosis 1, but there are a couple key differences. And that is, during meiosis 2, what's going to happen is both your daughter cells from meiosis 1 are going to continue to divide. So the end result of meiosis 2 is going to be four sperm cell or four egg cells, of course, if you're a girl. So remember that, let me go ahead and draw my cells. Remember that cells start meiosis 2 with 23 chromosomes, so 23 23. So unlike mitosis or meiosis 1, we're actually starting with two cells. So that's a good way to remember meiosis 2. You actually start with two cells, each of which have 23 chromosomes. Now meiosis 2 is going to separate the sister chromatids and send them to opposite sides of the cell. And we'll talk about that whenever we talk about prophase 2. So actually, let me go ahead and open up a new slide in... Actually, I want to write this in yellow. Prophase 2. So basically, what happens is, remember we have two cells to start with. I guess I can draw those a little bit bigger. A cell right here and a cell right here. And another thing that's going to happen is your spindles are going to start to form in prophase 2. So here's a spindle. I'll just draw one over here. One right here and another one right here. So we have all these spindles forming and another noteworthy thing is your nuclear membrane is going to start to break down again. So this is no different and even though we form the nuclear membrane at the end of meiosis 1 it's going to start to break down again in prophase 2. Now again don't forget that we have these chromosomes so we have these chromosomes right here I'll just draw them real quick so basically that's the key of prophase 2 what we need to remember is that the spindles are going to form again and your nuclear membrane is going to break down and the process of what happens next is actually pretty um I don't want to say interesting because I think it's interesting but it's a lot different than meiosis 1 and there are key differences that we need to know between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 so before you think about skipping ahead you know to the end of meiosis 2 watch these videos because there are a couple things that you definitely need to remember.